Have you heard about TrueNorth.bet? Built from the ground up to be the credible, dependable, safe gaming experience that Canadians like you are looking for. TrueNorth.bet focuses exclusively on Canada and Canadian players. TrueNorth.bet takes pride in having the best customer service in the market. They're professional, they're efficient, and they are built for you. And TrueNorth.bet has an incredible offer for you. They will match your first deposit up to 500 bucks in bonus funds. All you have to do is visit sdpn.truenorth.bet and register to get this incredible offer. Again, that's 500 bucks bonus funds for your first deposit, sdpn.truenorth.bet. I understand people doing snippets, a snippet. Not the whole article. But I love when people do the four picture Twitter thread and I'm like, okay, so that's just, you stole the article then. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, yeah, it's fair. So yeah, we don't no, want to steal the article, but I want you to read it. not encourage stealing content. Yeah. Go pay the fucking $5 it takes for a year subscription to The yeah. Athletic when you get all those fucking discounts. And Go pay your $5. And speaking of which, that's what I meant. Where somebody was going to screen grab one thing, not the whole fucking article. Oh, no. That's what, what I saw today is, oh, don't worry, I'll screenshot it. Oh, okay, yeah. Like, no, so the, now what's crazy about this article is is that it's long. It would take you 20 or 30 screenshots to do this whole thing because they deep dive the shit out of the coyotes. And I'm going to pick it up about partway through, sorry, at the end of their, their introduction. Said one non-Coyotes player who lamented the financial impact it would have on players throughout the NHL, they're costing everyone money year after year. Mm -hmm. That is how the NHL views this. Now, the owners and the players don't have a lot in common. But on this point, they are aligned. And the reason I know that is because um, we've sort of talked about it on AP with Alan Walsh. He mentioned this. He said, you do something like this, you are going to have to look at a situation where the Coyotes cannot take part. Now, he isn't saying that this is going to happen, but I think it's going to happen where the Coyotes cannot take part in revenue sharing. And that's because it's, there is no illusion that they could even become close to profitable with a building this small. Because the system is supposed to be, everybody's trying to be profitable, but for those who are not, we're going to help you out. And by the way, the revenue share checks that they write, I'll say this again and again and again, are so infinitesimal. You could not pay Phil Kessel's contract this year with the revenue share con uh, uh, checks that the Coyotes get. They get one check, and it's about $5 million. Oh. So when everybody talks about the small market teams couldn't survive without revenue share. The maximum check is like $5 million. Bullshit. Well, Luxury I, tax, please. And we're talking about like, that's enough to maybe pay like some of your team's employees. It's, it's, it's Austin like, Matthews' right arm. Yeah, less than half. So, well, less than half of his deal. It's less than half of three Leafs. So, uh, this is... This is an interesting question. What will a day in the life of an Arizona Coyotes player look like next season? That's one of the questions they outline. They said much will depend on when construction is completed. The best case scenario is that both the arena and the accompanying areas are done by December. The, that is Arizona State, not Tempe. No, Tempe, yeah, Tempe is yeah. like three years, four years. With the Coyotes on the hook for an estimated, remember I told you the revenue share. How much is the revenue share worth? What's the check they write? Five mil. Right. Coyotes are on the hook for an estimated $20 million to build a two-story, 15,000 square foot annex of amenities, locker rooms, medical areas, workout facilities to comply with NHL and NCAA standards. Even if the arena is finished earlier, and, and which, hey, by the way, if you've ever done renos, they're not. Uh, and the team is able to play before the annex is completed. The Coyotes will likely begin the season on the road, a move not without precedent. The Islanders did it for 13 straight road games. And where are the Islanders? Are they in the playoffs this year? They are in the uh -oh. toilet. They're getting better, but they they're gonna started miss. real bad. Yeah. Now, it goes on to talk about how they're going to face some logistical and schedule things. And okay. I'm gonna, we're going to obviously talk about some of that stuff. But I want to, again, allow for some of this to be read by you, the person who wants to read this article, because it's absolutely spectacular. Currently, the Coyotes' end-of-season cap hit is an estimated to be around $75 million, although actual salary expenditure is expected to be closer to $67 million. And one of the issues I have with that, and again, that number, by the way, is going to get much bigger. The, the gap between um, what they say, they're, you know, what the cap says and what mm -hmm. they spend is going to grow. Right. Why is it that everybody has a huge issue with Tampa, Montreal, I think this year is spending $100 million, uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs have done it. The Rangers, I think, have done it. Boston definitely does it. Vegas does it. 
Why do we have an issue with teams spending $100 million in real dollars, but we don't have an issue with teams spending no money? There's so the, you have a you have an issue with teams going over the cap, quote unquote, but under it in actual cap dollars, right? Mm -hmm. In actual dollars, you don't have an issue with them spending less, but quote unquote spending close to the cap or above the floor in fake dollars. Because remember, the cap is uh, double sided. the The cap is there's a there's a ceiling to prevent competitive advantage, mm -hmm. and there's a floor to prevent competitive apathy, mm -hmm. and if you are spending below the floor, which it looks like they might, that's competitive apathy. You're not even trying. You're not even trying. You're not even trying. Like, okay, what, one of the things that was discussed um, is, you know, the Coyotes badly need players under contract for next season. I kind of think that's part of the reason they didn't trade Jacob Chicken. Mm -hmm. They could have got this windfall for him. At the end of the day, you need players. And you need some of them to be good. For you need, God's you need sake. a watchable product. As I mentioned to you, seeing the Coyotes at ASU is going to be a spectacular environment. Mm -hmm. When else are you going to see an NHL team with 3,000 people? Yeah. You have the opportunity to win over a young audience that's going to join the workforce in a few years and then get into their prime earning years when you expect to be good, a.k.a. the people that'll buy your tickets. But if your team sucks ass, you're not going to build a team. You're not going to be able to build the environment. I tell you what, you better have good drink deals. Because if I was yeah. a student, that's the only reason I'd go. It's oh, a, it's in the States, though. Fuck. It's something they outlined. <laughs> it's something they outlined in the article in that. It'll be a spectacular event seeing uh, an NHL professional hockey playing in this building. And they had the numbers of, like, the AHL buildings that are going to be bigger than this. The uh, OHL buildings that the are already, ECHL has already a bunch building. Of yeah, they, they have those numbers in there. Well, the KHL, They said course. it'll be a great event for anybody coming in for the night and watching. But the quote they had is, every other team in the league will be laughing at us when they visit. That and was that Coyotes player who said that. They're going to be laughing at us. There's no avoiding that reality for the Coyotes next season. That quote, Jesse, is insane. They will likely be in an uncomfortable and unsettled situation. Uh, more unsettled situation than the players they are competing against. And NHL players are a proud group being the butt of jokes and jabs about playing for what might feel like a minor league operation is not ideal. And as again, that's where they lead in with that quote. Every other team will be laughing at us when they come to visit us. That is a current Coyotes player saying that. So Our as as much as it's a spectacular event for the fan, for us as media people, like I want to take a trip to go see uh, an NHL game in this building. But for the guys in that room who got to do this makeshift college arena thing, like they're going to be laughed at and it's not fun for them. Um, Hari Sateri who the Coyotes just claimed off waivers, played in Siberia, Russia, in front of a building with a capacity of 7,000. <laughs> like, th this is... <laughs> Siberia. 2,000 more! There's 2,000 more than the maximum before they have to take seats out for the dressing room. To right. Jesse. Like, people keep saying 5,000, 5,000. It's not. No, it's going to be like 4,200. He played in a 7,000-seat arena that is double the size. It's going to, by the, by the time it's all said and done, it'll be nearly double the size. Remember when Gary Bettman said they would generate potentially more revenue? You mean when he lied? Yeah. Well, what we said was, <laughs> it's it's almost like what Keith Olbermann told us on Agent yep. Provocateur. When teams say they're losing money, it doesn't mean they're not profitable. It just means they made less profit this year than last year. Uh, they're the, not losing any money. What was quote? An accountant talking, can make any number. So I forget. He said yeah, the accountant can make any number do anything. The, the numbers could say whatever you want them to say. Right. That was and he, was, he told a story about the Dodgers. And I guess they, they won the championship. And then the next year they missed the playoffs. And uh, GM Wands was in the, uh, the, the owner's office. And he goes, yeah, it was, you know, still a pretty good season, blah, blah, blah. And the owner said, what do you mean good season? We lost money this year. And the GM's walking out thinking he's going to get fired. And one of his friends said to him, don't worry. We made $6 million last year. We lost, quote unquote, $2 million, but we still made $4 million this year. And that's when, <laughs> that's when houses were five grand. You know, like, they, you know, they lost money because yeah, they know. didn't make as much. So, so here's the thing. A front office executive, is that possible that the Coyotes will generate more revenue? Now, I think they might lose less revenue. But the front office executive quote says, that's hilarious if you actually know the business. And of course, this is interesting. According to a league source, the average NHL team, team makes about $2.3 million in fan-driven revenue. It's tickets, parking, food, beverage, and merchandise sales. I don't, I don't think the Leafs make much. You, you would per, think that... Per game? No, no, no. All season. No, no, that's per game. 
That's per, sorry, yeah, per yeah, game. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, it's a little it's a little different. Oh, it's a little different. Okay, yes, dude, the cap is like eighty one. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, in the in Glen, sorry, the Coyotes in Glendale make less than nine hundred grand. Yeah, it's a little different per team to per team. Like we did these numbers uh, a couple months ago during the pandemic when fans couldn't go to the stadiums, and we saw the Ottawa numbers, we saw the Toronto numbers in comparison. Like Toronto's making a couple million dollars more than the Senators. No offense, but yeah. yeah. So like that's that's per game. There. Um, uh, at this point, th- they talked to an accountant about this. Um, the if each Coyotes fan represents three hundred and fourteen dollars in value, that's tickets, parking, food, whatever. Uh, using an average of 10,000 fans, the Coyotes would be generating around $850,000 in re- fan revenue per game. Under the 5,000 person model, uh, the average general ticket costing 100 bucks, um, they would have to increase it to 300 $300 a ticket, which is more than I paid for both my Leafs tickets tonight. Assuming sellouts and current concession merchandising prices remain the same, they would then be able to make $850,000 per game at $300 a ticket in a sellout situation. And by the way, need I remind you, this is a university. Yeah. And to go see the ND- NCAA, which is a far better product than the Coyotes ever will be. Um, well, well, maybe, maybe I mean, not ever will be. The Houston will be great. Um, the, <laughs> I the, think Tempe's got great potential, but you got to get there. Yeah, um, I think the, the, the Coyotes... Are gonna if they they can't up the tickets that much. I don't even think if you're if you're the Coyotes if you're just gonna take the L take the L and you have got to lower ticket prices because what kind of college kid can spend a hundred dollars on anything other than three hundred? Well, that's just during that's just a model. That's that's, that's not what to they're gonna charge. make them the same profits that they're making now. You'd have to have the ticket prices be astronomical. Jesus, yeah, that's crazy, crazy money. And they, they obviously they go into a whole bunch of other things, COVID revenues, things like that. Mm-hmm. And here's the other. Unmentioned hurdle. The city of Tempe. Thomas. City of Tempe has yet to approve the arena. Wait, sorry, say that again. Tempe has not approved the arena yet. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's uh they might not have anywhere to play. They need the new rink to be start getting construction, else they can't play anywhere. That that feels like an underrated aspect of this story how many weeks or months away are we from oh yeah never mind they can't even do this yeah i'm i'm waiting for i don't know when the city council meeting is but that's what's gonna happen like they're all gonna vote on it and i'm waiting for the day we see the news update drop and it's like oh city council voted against building an arena for the coyotes because they don't pay anybody the money they're owed we can't trust this franchise to be run operationally and then after they vote down that arena if they do then the team's just going to be sold and moved. The Coyotes were also put on a $50,000 per month payment plan in October to settle outstanding accounts with the city of Tucson for back rent when the Tucson Convention Center, where their AHL team plays, uh, was not paid. The bill was not paid for that. Remember, they also didn't pay taxes. Mike Stevens looked that up. That Mm -hmm. was a great find by him. Mikey Stevens, that is. Uh, The payment plan was initiated. The back rent owed to the Roadrunner for the Roadrunners Season total two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and as of last week, the overall debt has now been whittled down to one hundred forty-five thousand um, dollars. One aspect of the ASU deal seems obvious. They said Jermaine, but I'm going to say obvious. The university is requiring the Coyotes to pay upfront for construction and to prepay rent and expenses prior to each season. Wow! Oh, not each month, each season. Oof. Pretty penny. They can't pay the road runners hundred and fifty grand. Yeah, that was new information. Or they're choosing not to. It was new information that not only were they delinquent on their NHL payments, but their AHL team was also de- delinquent. So uh, an issue with Shea Weber, um, and you know, oh, you know, getting his fake contract. This isn't Pavel Datsuk. Pavel Datsuk, I think, it was a seven point five million dollar cap hit, zero actual dollars. Mm-hmm. Shea Weber. Um, over the next, if you include, let's say they made a deal at the deadline. Mm-hmm. If you include a chunk of money that they owed this season. Sorry, I was um, breathing into the microphone. Again. Oh, I didn't even know. <laughs> My bad. I was I'm looking through stuff and I'm going, <laughs> yeah, just really angry about the coyote. Sorry. Go ahead, Steve. If you include some of the money that Weber is owed still this season, plus the money he's owed over the next four, because his contract still goes for another four, he still owed like seven, seven and a half million dollars. And that's a lot of money to spend on a guy who's not going to play for you. 
but they and would they pref- that it. they find that to be preferable because of the money they don't have to spend. It's opportunity cost. They would rather pay him. I still think it's too much. Steve, they don't have a choice. It's opportunity cost. It's like, do we spend do we spend seven million in actual dollars, or do we spend three million dollars and not have to worry about the other three million? Hmm. It's still because it's, it's still money going out the door for nothing. That's the point. It's less it's money less going than, out the door yeah. for nothing. Like here, let me look at Steve. Brian Steve, what? if I say this coffee costs five dollars and this coffee costs three dollars, and they're the same coffee, what one are you buying? The three dollar one, right? Yeah. So it's less money out the door, right? Well, no, Adam. I think what I'm getting at is I can't afford coffee today. <laughs> right. So no, I'm sorry, Steve. You'll have to prepay for your coffee. You're just yeah. providing <laughs> reason for them to take the Brian Little contract instead of the Shea Weber one, right? Well, actually, Brian Little's is terrible too. Because, so remember with David Clarkson and Nathan Horton, one of the contracts was insured and the other wasn't. Mm-hmm. I think, I wonder... If Brian Littles is insured and Weber's isn't, yes, I think that the uh, I think that's what we're coming to. Because Little is owed far more money than Shea Weber, mm-hmm. so and we know on good authority that all of Shea Weber's contract isn't insured. Oh boy, why didn't they insure it? I don't know. How that I don't works. know why that's not just policy. Yeah. The Leafs insured. I know it costs money. I know there's cost to that, but you write that off against the expenses of the club. I don't understand that. 